Welcome back to Cooking with Bobby Joe. Chastity here with another slow cooker meal. This can be a keto meal and it is simple to make, y'all. I'm going to be making pulled pork. A lot of times you can find these pork roasts on sale. This one was $1.94 a pound. And I will give you a price breakdown on this meal at the end. This is one of those things you can make several different meals out of, which is exactly what I did. Pork shoulder makes the perfect cut of meat for pulled pork. It has a good meat to fat ratio, which does great in the slow cooker. And as the fat renders and the collagen melts, it creates a drool-worthy gelatin that bastes the meat, and that keeps it nice and juicy. I like the bone-in, but you can also use boneless. Leaner meats like pork tenderloin can also be used, but you have to be careful not to overcook those because they don't have the fat needed to prevent it from drying out. It can be done. You just have to keep a closer eye on it than you do when you cook a pork shoulder in the crock pot. I'm using my 8-quart Hamilton Beach slow cooker for this one. This roast is almost 7 pounds, so my 4-quart crock pot is a little too small for this recipe. This only requires three ingredients. You need a pork roast, a fourth a cup of water, and some liquid smoke. Traditional pulled pork gets the drool-worthy smoky flavor from smoking it. Liquid smoke lets you easily have that flavor in your slow cooker pulled pork. If you want even more flavor, add some garlic, onion, and other spices to the pork. I'm sharing this with the parents, so I keep it as plain as possible, and then we season it to our own taste once it's done. And believe me when I say this is drill worthy without all the added seasonings. It is very good. Okay, so I have a fourth a cup of water and I'm going to add some liquid smoke in here. I do one to three tablespoons depending on the size of the roast. I'm just going to pour some in. I'm not really going to measure it. I'd say that's a couple of tablespoons. I sometimes add apple cider vinegar too, but I'm leaving it off today because I told the parents this was going to be plain. So we're going to leave it plain. I will add some salt and pepper. I remove the meat from the package, rinse it, and place it in the slow cooker. I then pour the liquid smoke water mixture over it. Place the lid on and turn on low. And I'm going to leave it on low to cook for about eight hours. Now, if you have a smaller roast, it may be done in about six hours. Okay, next I'm going to make some keto barbecue sauce. Don't forget to check out my webpage link in the video description for the recipes for the keto barbecue sauce and the pulled pork. In a saucepan, add an eight ounce can of sugar-free tomato sauce, two tablespoons of Washer Sister sauce, Roostershire sauce. What else is it called, y'all? <laughs> the W sauce that nobody can pronounce. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Two teaspoons of liquid smoke. A few drops of Tennessee Sunshine Sauce, and if you don't have Tennessee Sunshine Sauce, because I'm not sure if you can find that everywhere, um, you can also use hot sauce or whatever your favorite spicy sauce is. One teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a fourth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, you can do a little more if you want it a little hotter. A fourth a cup of swerve brown sugar. Mix it all together. Then you want to place it over medium heat and boil for about five minutes. And that's all there is to it. You just remove it from the heat and you can store it in a storage jar. Okay, it's been eight hours. To check to see if the roast is ready to pull, I just get two forks and I see if the roast can easily pull apart. And as you see, this is ready. I'm gonna get a baking sheet. I'm gonna place the pork on it so I can shred it easier. They have shredding claws and forks on Amazon that make this go a lot quicker. I'll put a link in the video description for those. I also put a link to the Tennessee Sunshine Sauce because I love that stuff. I use it on everything. Now this meat is so tender it's falling apart as I remove it from the slow cooker. 
Do not throw out this broth. This stuff is delicious to use when you're making rice, and you can also use it in potatoes. Just add it in instead of water. I'm going to make some rice for my father-in-law. I'm going to show you how I do that with this pork broth. I'm just going to add two cups of this broth into the saucepan, and I'm adding two cups of water. Now, if you want a smaller serving of rice, just add the two cups of broth, and you're going to use one cup of rice. I'm making enough for a family, so I need four cups of liquid. So I'm using two cups of broth, two cups of water. I'm going to heat that to a boil. And once it starts boiling, add in two cups of rinsed long grain rice. Give it a stir and place the lid on. And I'm going to turn the temp down to three on my stove. You want it to be on a lower temperature. And it takes about 20 to 25 minutes for it to fully cook. You can tell when it's done when all the liquid is absorbed. And do not remove the lid until it is done. Do not be tempted to remove the lid in between because that lid is helping it cook right. It should look like this. An additional salt, pepper, butter can be added, but I let everyone season it to their liking. The broth gives it a delicious flavor, and it also has bits of pork in it from the broth, which is really good. There's still some pork broth left, so I'm going to store that in the fridge. I also pour a little of this broth over my pork that I store in the fridge. That way I have the extra moisture when I heat it back up. Oh, and look at all the pork in the bottom. I should have poured this in that rice. It would have been good in that rice. The rice is good, but this would have made it better. This remaining broth will be used for a side of potatoes. You just do the same thing when you make potatoes. You substitute the water for broth. Okay, back to the pork. You just want to shred it, and it is so tender and juicy, it's easily shredded. Okay, let's make a sandwich. I don't have any hamburger buns, which this is really good on hamburger buns, but we're going to be using some toasted bread. And for those sticking with a keto diet, this is delicious on a chaffle. I have a video on how to make a chaffle. I will link that in the video description as well. This pork can be stored in the fridge three to four days. It can also be stored in the freezer in an airtight container or a freezer bag for up to three months. And it can be used for some other crock pot meals, which I will show you next week. This meat made several sandwiches and two additional crock pot meals. The broth from the meat made a family serving of rice and also a family serving of mashed potatoes for a side another day. This is a budget-friendly way to feed a family some drool-worthy meals because this stuff was so good. Okay, so for a price breakdown, on my roast, it was $12.88. I already had liquid smoke on hand, so I did not have to buy that, but I looked on the Food City website, and it shows that it's $2.39 for a small thing of liquid smoke. You're also going to need whatever barbecue sauce you want to use. I usually make my own because I do not need the added sugars that are in the store-bought sauces. And you're also going to need some bread if you're going to make sandwiches. So for under $20, you can feed a large family with this. I fed four people several sandwiches. We did not just have this for one meal. We had pork sandwiches for a couple of days, to be honest. And as I said, I ended up making two additional meals with the leftover pulled pork. And those both were crock pot meals. So stay tuned next week for those. I love simple meals like this that can make other meals. It saves money and time. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more do-it-yourself projects, gardening, bird videos, and jewelry, human, and doggy treats. Y'all have a blessed day.